Welcome to Mojo Place. It's time to get your garlic ready, since today we're counting down our picks for the 10 best Castlevania games that you need to sink your fangs or wooden stake into. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. Dracula's nefarious presence looms ominously over Europe, and he curses the continent with his dark powers, aided by his dastardly minions. Fear not, however, as Trevor Belmont is here to save the day, aided by his vampire slaying whip, holy water, cross, and his raw courage. Castlevania III Dracula's Curse is a menagerie of all things supernatural horror, including the likes of vampires, of course, ghosts, gargoyles, bats, possessed knights, and even Frankenstein's monster. It's a glorious Castlevania experience that retains the challenge level of the original game while still giving Trevor and his playable companions, including Alucard, Grand Dynasty, and Sypha Belnades, just enough tools, weapons, and abilities to scrape by, in hopes of stopping Dracula's eponymous dark curse. With branching paths and multiple endings, this is one Castlevania game with plenty of meat on its bones. <music> Castlevania Lords of Shadow Castlevania games haven't always stuck the landing like their 2D counterparts. While games like Castlevania Lament of Innocence and Castlevania Curse of Darkness are certainly exceptional 3D Castlevania games in their own rights, they sadly didn't gain as much acclaim as other 2D games in the long-running series. Fortunately, 2010's Castlevania Lords of Shadow from developer Mercury Steam proves that 3D Castlevania games can be epic, immersive, engaging, and deeply rewarding, with both critics and fans enjoying this entry. Lords of Shadows feels and plays like a blend of PS2-esque God of War games and something like Devil May Cry. You step into the harrowing boots of Gabriel Belmont, a knight from the Brotherhood of Light who seeks revenge for the wrongful death of his wife, Marie. This strong and emotional setup seeps into every facet of this finely tuned action adventure game, one that offers excellent combat, incredible world and stage design, fun upgrades, and some deep lore. Now, don't sleep on Lords of Shadow if for some reason you miss this 3D Castlevania gem. The power of the Lords of Shadow is the key. You think you can bring someone back from the dead, don't you? Castlevania Bloodlines. Castlevania Bloodline stands out for most other 2D Castlevania games, seeing as it was specifically crafted for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. The unique look and feel of this game easily sets it apart from other entries in the series, especially with its vibrant, chunky art style and sprite work. Taking place around the time frame of World War I, the story here takes a pretty big departure in that Dracula isn't actually the big baddie here, instead this role being held up by Elizabeth Bartley, a terrifying temptress vampire who seeks to use global chaos to bring about the dark return of Dracula, who just so happens to be her uncle. Bloodlines tasks you to play as both John Morris and Eric Lacard, with each character having their own unique weapon and traversal ability, helping to ensure each playthrough feels vastly different, while encouraging exploration of the game's varied creative stages. Pepper in some challenging sub-bosses, regular end-of-stage bosses, platforming gauntlets, and more, and you have a deliciously bloody good Castlevania experience. Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. <laughs> 
Handheld consoles are a bastion for top-notch 2D Castlevania games, with Castlevania Order of Ecclesia proving this point. Where many Castlevania games see you playing as one of the Belmont clan, Order of Ecclesia stars Shinoa, a powerful member of the titular Order who is tasked with quelling Dracula's darkness and evil reign, specifically through the use of magical glyphs. These glyphs are a prominent and primary part of the gameplay since they comprise how Shinoa deals with most of the creatures of the night that roam this 1800s land. Order of Ecclesia is unique in that it's actually quite dialogue heavy, with many sections comprised of character dialogue interactions and exposition dumps, mostly when spending time in one of the game's villages, such as Weigel Village. Order of Ecclesia is a solid entry on the DS that offers a robust suite of glyph-based combat, inventive stages and baddies, and a compelling protagonist who perfectly takes up the reins after the Belmont clan vanishes. Here's hoping we get more Castlevania games down the line starring Shinoa. Castlevania Circle of the Moon Game Boy Advance's Circle of the Moon is unique in that it was actually a launch title for the popular Nintendo handheld console. Circle of the Moon takes the tried and true vampire hunters versus Dracula premise and runs with it to great success. Playing as Nathan Graves, a vampire hunter who seeks to avenge his parents after they died trying to defeat Dracula, this entry in the series takes place in an 1830 version of the infamous castle. After coming up against a powerful minion of Dracula, namely Camilla, Nathan and his pals Hugh and Morris are separated, and it's up to Nathan to use his vampire hunting abilities to save the day. Circle of the Moon's gameplay offers something pretty different from other Castlevania games, whereby Nathan can utilize magic-based cards and powers in a system known as DSS, or Dual Setup System. Combining cards alongside Nathan's unlock traversal and movement abilities and some RPG elements, he is able to further his exploration into the castle's ominous depths. Castlevania Circle of the Moon is steeped in gothic and Victorian horror flair, which pairs nicely with the game's impeccable musical tracks. <laughs> Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow Soma Cruz takes the spotlight here in Dawn of Sorrow, a Castlevania game on the DS that cleverly utilizes the handheld console's stylus for magic seals in order to capture the souls of bosses in addition to opening up certain pathways. Soma returns from Aria of Sorrow, more on that game later, this time with him at the center of a cult who very much want to see him utilized in order to reincarnate the Dark Lord, aka Dracula. Soma obviously wants to avoid this for reasons that won't be spoiled here, so he works alongside the likes of Mina, Genya, Julius, Yoko, and Hammer in the hopes of stopping this evil, vampire-focused cult. Soma is able to take on the powers of defeated enemies by capturing their souls, with these various souls offering him great powers that both serve in combat and traversal throughout the alternate version of Dracula's castle. By using these tactical souls, players change up their character build and playstyle on the fly, depending on the area of the castle as well as its many challenging bosses. Castlevania No matter how rudimentary or antiquated the original 1986 Castlevania might look and play by today's gaming standards, we simply can't deny how powerful this game was as the pinnacle progenitor to a franchise that completely helped invent its own genre, namely the Metroidvania, alongside the likes of Metroid, of course. As soon as the iconic Stage 1 Vampire Killer music track kicks in, you know you are in for a good time. Castlevania 
Simon Belmont is ready to kick Dracula's butt, and to do so, he must scour the dark, gothic, and moody castle, battling all manner of monstrosities and supernatural creatures. Castlevania is an incredibly challenging platform adventure game, one that will test your mettle as a vampire hunter. This is not a game that will hold your hand as you explore its many stages, seeing as everything in this castle seeks to send you to your doom. Just be sure to grab plenty of that coveted wall chicken when you get the chance. Super Castlevania 4 With its melancholic, almost somber tone, along with its chunky visual style, Super Castlevania 4 immediately stands out from other 2D counterparts. This Super Nintendo Castlevania game is overflowing with creative ideas and moments, from the likes of the swinging chandelier room that will test your platforming prowess, to the ethereal waltzing ghostly couple boss battle. There's just always something new and exciting to pique your curiosity here. It certainly doesn't hurt that the striking gothic-infused late 17th century Transylvania setting is a real thing of dark beauty. It's here that protagonist Simon uses his multifaceted whip to take on the spooky creatures of the night that lurk in and around the castle. The original games' NES arcade vibes are still here and present in Super Castlevania 4, making it one of those platforming adventure games that you can return to time and time again in the hopes of getting a better score or clearing the game stages in quicker fashion. Castlevania Aria of Sorrow The precursor to Dawn of Sorrow, Game Boy Advance's Aria of Sorrow is a stone-cold gaming gem and is easily the best of the handheld Castlevania experiences. In addition to phenomenal moment-to-moment -moment gameplay where central character Soma Cruz can utilize various enemy souls via the tactical soul system for his own power and advantage, this game features some of the most diverse, varied, creepy, and unique roster of baddies and bosses in the entirety of the series. Seriously, there's always a new enemy type and each one feels in its special in its own very right. One standout has to be the Headhunter boss, an ethereal spectral aberration who's able to shapeshift depending on the type of head it attaches to its body. Now it's pure nightmare fuel, and creature designs like this are strewn all throughout Soma's harrowing adventure. Aria of Sorrow is set apart from other Castlevania narratives and settings in that it actually takes place in the near future, 2035 to be exact, when the Dark Lord himself, Dracula, has actually already been stopped and supernaturally locked away. But it quickly becomes clear that Soma might just be the target of some nefarious people who want to use him to bring back Dracula. The way Aria of Sorrow perfectly blends character interactions, lore drips, tight combat, RPG elements, soul usage, and exploration ensures this game will remain a classic for years to come. <laughs> Castlevania Symphony of the Night Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a timeless masterpiece, a game still held up as one of the greatest video games of all time. The way this game subverts players' expectations around every corner is simply ingenious. The opening with Richter and Dracula bantering in his darkly elegant throne room before duking it out in a climactic battle, to the way Alucard meets death at the start of the castle, to the way death just takes away Alucard's best gear, and the fact that when you think the game might be coming to a close, the infamous castle inverts and you must play through the whole area again, but this time upside down. It's incredible moments like this in tangent with meaty weighty combat, robust RPG elements, oodles upon oodles of weapons and gear, and one of the best video game soundtracks ever that prove why Symphony of the Night is such a stalwart. Alucard is a top tier playable character, and his struggle with the fact that his father is literally Dracula himself is nothing short of brilliant. And yes, Alucard is Dracula backwards, if for some reason you missed that little tidbit of naming goodness. 
Simply put, Symphony of the Night is a bastion for pure, spooky, highly engaging fun that will sink its teeth into you for the long haul. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? So, do you agree with our picks for this list of best Castlevania games? If there are other games in this long-running series that you love that we didn't mention here, be sure to share them with us down in the comments. Thank you for checking out this video from Mojo Plays. If you want to see more from us, then be sure to press that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our wonderful daily gaming videos.